We as humans just love to put things into categories. Everything has to have a name, and everything has to be grouped into bigger and bigger groups. We do it all the time, from how we classify forms of life to how we organize the history of the Earth. So when it comes to organizing time, what's the big deal with BC and AD? Can we just have one single counting of years without having to split it in half? And what makes it different from CE and BCE? Is there a better way of doing it? That's what we're going to find out on this episode of Stuff You've Probably Wondered. To explain things right away, BC stands for British Columbia if you live in Canada, but for the rest of the world, it stands for Before Christ, referring to the time before Jesus was born in Nazareth. This is why there's no year zero, because any time after Jesus was born becomes AD. Speaking of AD, this unit of time stands for Anno Domini, which is Latin for in the year of our Lord, not after death like some people might think it would be. The origin of the BC AD timescale in fact does not go all the way back to the time of Jesus, but a while after in AD 525. Side note, for whatever reason, when referring to something as being in AD, the letters go before the year, but if it's BC, they go after it. Just thought you should know. The concept of Anno Domini was created by an Italian man named Dionysius Exegius, after being commissioned by the Pope to figure out exactly when Jesus was born. Dionysius was able to make a rough approximation by using a thing called a computus. These objects, also called Easter tables, were used to determine when Easter was on a given year. By tracing back the years of the Computus and doing a lot of research out of the Bible and historical Roman sources, Dionysius confirmed that Jesus was born in the Roman year AUC 753, or over 500 years before his time. All those letters and numbers probably don't mean anything to you, so let's put it in context. During Dionysius' time, the Roman Empire, while mostly broken up for various emperors to slice among themselves, was still a very real presence in the world, and thus remnants of the culture remained all throughout Europe. One of these remnants was the Roman calendar, with its year starting at AUC 1, or the year Rome was founded. Thus, AUC stands for Ab Urbi Condita, or the founding of the city. Of course, we have no record of when Rome was founded, and neither did the Romans. So after a ton of arguing and historians checking patriarchal record after patriarchal record, an agreement was reached and Rome was officially decided to have been founded 753 years before the birth of Jesus. When Dionysius made the determination of Jesus' birth, he noted this using the phrase, since the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Later on, when an Anglo-Saxon historian named the Venerable Bede was compiling information on the history of the British Isles in his book, Ecclesiastical History of the English People, he decided to implement Dionysius' method of AD in his own works. Now, during Bede's time, people's methods of tracking the year could get a little complicated. Either they used one of three counting methods that were all different and started in AD 312, or they based years off the reign of anyone in power, didn't matter who it was. Bede's reasoning was probably more related to the fact that he was a bit of a fanboy over Dionysius Exegus. From there, AD was discovered by the French King Charlemagne, who liked the method. As he spread his influence throughout Western Europe, so too to spread the idea of Anno Domini. Thus, Western civilization as we know it has come to embrace AD and BC for the basis of their counting years. Interestingly though, the term BC wasn't actually used to determine times before Christ until a French theologian named Denis Petau suggested it all the way in 1627. So where does BCE and CE fit in? Well, the two terms represent the exact same times as BC and AD, but people who prefer not to use Christian connotation when counting years lean more toward BCE and CE. The terms stand for Before Common Era and Common Era. Where they started being used isn't totally clear, but the earliest mention of them comes from a book written by Johann Kepler, in which he refers to the current years as the Vulgar Era, which would later be developed into being called Common or Christian Era. While we still usually use BC and AD, BCE and CE is catching on rather quickly, and is accepted by plenty of non-Western countries, and even used by the United Nations. But the real question is, is there a better way of counting the years? Well, currently with our Gregorian calendar being the standard throughout almost everywhere in the world, the answer is probably no. However, there are two interesting suggestions for reform that people have come up with. The first of these is called ISO 8601, which attempts to further de-Christianize BCE and CE by doing away with the two terms altogether. Instead, any year that would be in the Common Era would contain a plus sign, and any taking place before the Common Era would have a minus sign. The other method is the Holocene calendar, which really only adds 10,000 years to the current year. The reasoning behind this is it makes the year a more universally relevant one, for it starts around the time we think the agricultural revolution began, a time when humans as a species really separated themselves from other animals by farming for the first time. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions you want me to answer, or have an original song you'd like me to put in the background of a future video, leave it in the comments or email me at stuffyouveprobablywondered at gmail.com. Also in the comments, share your thoughts on AD and BC. Does it still make sense to use them today? Is there a better way of counting the years? 
Either way, I'll see you next time on Stuff You've Probably Wondered.